Hello and welcome back. Today, something that uh, the Swatch group definitely does not want me working on, and that is a coaxial uh, Speedmaster. So I have loosened the case back on it. It's currently not running and the oscillating weight is stuck. That's about what I know about it. So this is a caliber 3330. And as I said, the oscillating weight is not, not moving. Mm -hmm. okay. That's because obviously this spring here has disengaged. Hmm. So what I mean by the Swatch Group, um, they're currently they're not selling parts to independent watchmakers like myself, and uh, that of course makes it a bit of a risk to go into a watch like this as I cannot get any parts for it. But um, sod them, I'm going to have a go. So the oscillating weight's fine. Well, my first impression looking at it is it does look very much like an ETA slash Valju 7750 in terms of the finishing of the wheels here. You do have a column wheel, which is nice. Well, I'm not gonna press this too much around as we're missing the spring is disengaged. Okay, well, I'm going to take this apart as I would any other watch, and I'm going to do that in time lapse, as it's going to be the opposite of putting it back together. If I do find any snags or find any broken bits, which means I can't continue on this because I cannot get parts, I'll um, slow down, we'll stop, and I'll admit defeat. But uh, so far, I'm feeling quite um, quite confident. That might, of course, be um, be a stupid thing to uh, accept something like this, but uh, we'll find out. I have fitted the uh, shock jewels into the um, balance assembly and the balance is moving freely. As you can see, there's no regulator on the balance clock itself. It's adjusted by these little regulator screws, which um, if you turn them outwards, you get, uh, it will go slower. 
turn them inwards, it'll go faster. But there's no point even touching that until we've uh, until we got the movement running. Hopefully we'll get it running. I haven't seen anything obviously wrong except for quite a bit of dirt that has made its way down into the gear train. Um, no parts to be had, thanks to um, Amiga's parent company Swatch deciding that uh, selling spare parts is a big no-no, as they want all the services to go to them. But here we are, defying the, defying the wishes, and uh, that might be a stupid thing, because if I uh, muck something up, I'm not going to get the spare parts. So um, this might be a complete waste of time. But we might as well give it a try. I'm going to remove the balance now in order to fit the rest of the gear train. To admit I do really like the new new shock protection style spring it's uh, these little levers are very nice to work with when opening and closing reduces the chances of scratching so that's that's nice the movement is pretty well executed but it definitely you can see a lot of parts uh, uh, if not directly taken from the 7750 are strongly influenced by the 7750. A little bit of grease there and then we are also going to put a little bit of grease but uh, 1300 HP oil in here. I do believe this movement was last, well I don't think this has ever been serviced and it's about 10 years old so it's actually kept pretty well. So all I'm going to do now is put the basic base gear train back together and then the setting and winding mechanism and then we're going to um, see if it runs first of all and then we're going to um, put the chronograph pieces back together. Mind you if I'm a little bit extra slow putting this together it is because I have not done one of these before this is the first time Here we go, let's mount the gear train liner. At this point, it'd be a good thing to remember to fit the hacking lever, cutting like this. Probably not correct, but I'm going to put a little bit of grease on here, just following the good old mantra that everything that slides should have a little bit of grease on it. If it's got a bit of friction like this, put that in here, and that will engage with the um, with the sliding pinion that comes in here later on, back and forth. Right, let's put a little bit of oil here. And here. Next, we can fit the can fit the uh, gear train bridge.
Next, we're going to fit the um, ratchet wheel. See, all this is very 7750 again. I can't help but say it. It's, um, it works, but I do think the. If I was going to give this a point score, I'd say the both the finish and the click and everything on the ratchet wheel is far underneath what I would expect um, on the movement in this price range. Basically just a wire spring that stops this from going back. So, um, it has a function, it works, but always when I take them apart I find I find bits of de debris around this, so it's not my favorite click in the world. Um, I can forgive it on a 7750 and kind of a workhouse chronograph movement in a reasonably priced chronograph, but on an Amiga like this, I would expect them to make that a little bit nicer, especially as they've gone to the effort of making a column wheel, blah -de blah blah and then they haven't improved on the ratchet and the ratchet click. That's a bit disappointing. Well, who am I to be disappointed? Uh, it's not my watch, but uh, you know, sometimes you just expect people to do a little bit more. But then again, I'm not qualified to work on this movement, so I should just uh, keep my mouth shut. Anyway, here we go. That's the crown wheel coming in. You see the escape wheel is not here. The escape wheel comes in here and at the same time the pallet will come in that comes in in its own setup. So I'm not going to put that in now. I'm going to put the winding and setting mechanism because I just want to see that uh, the moment uh, winds freely. I'm going to turn it around. So just like on the just like on the 7750, you have, I believe it's even the same part, so if I muck it up, I might be able to get another one. But you have the clutch, it's in here, it's this little tension spring that goes around. And this is going to be pressed onto this pinion here. So I'm going to put a little bit of blue grease here to allow this to slide nicely. And I'm going to press it onto the movement. So if you see that here, I've put uh, three dots of blue grease that that will slide onto. And now, we can press that onto the second wheel here. There. The setting and winding mechanism here is 7750 again. Pretty much would not surprise me if I can use the same parts. Forgive me, I have not researched too much into it. Please comment if you know how much is actually based on the 7750 value or ETA as it now is. It's interesting to see who's done what. I don't mind that, 7750 is a fantastic movement. Though I would not mind a slightly more refined winding and setting wheel. No, winding, a uh, ratchet wheel, sorry. There we go. If I 
go a bit quiet. It's just because I'm actually concentrating on this one. I really don't want to mess anything up. It's not, I don't really want to mess anything up ever, but just, it's an extra pressure you have when you know you can't get parts. If you've got something like this and you want it to be serviced by me, you really got to be aware that if I mess something up, um, there's not much I can do. I'm not going to, uh, I, I can't buy the watch off you because I broke it because you sent it to me to be serviced. So that's why I'll just say no if you were to take that risk. And that's fine by me. Um, then you can send it to Amiga. But if you're happy for me to... Uh, maybe break it then uh and you're not going to keep me uh and charge me for it then uh, you're welcome to send it to me I'll, I'll have a go so the usual mantra is if it uh has a sliding surface we'll put a little bit of grease on it in the wrong way around this comes underneath of course there we go like so I can see Amiga's been working to keep the costs down on certain screws, they're so not polished on the dial side, which uh, you'd think, okay, well, that makes sense to have one finish on the bottom, one finish on the top, but I do see on the top that you don't have a finish on the uh, ratchet wheel neither, so it's a little bit, a little bit disappointing, I would say. So hopefully the setting lever spring in the right position. You've got to make sure that your hacking lever is in the uh, sliding pinion, otherwise you can break that. I've tried that on a, another watch a long time ago. That was not fun. Go that engages there. Winds. Flip the movement around. Actually, you can see here, of course, when I'm winding it, you can see that uh, clutch wheel turning around. I've also oiled the jewels now. I did that earlier. So this is all set to get the pallet and escape wheel in place. Statement wheel comes in here and the pallet which is trying to get away from me comes in the other way around here. You get the gist. I'm going to do this under the microscope and uh, I'm not going to be filming it because I do feel a bit of pressure now. If I muck this up, I'm in, uh, well, the customer's in deep to do, but I really, has, I'm, I'm spending time and effort on this as well. And 
yeah, I would really not want to mess this up. Okie doke, we got it in there. Um, seems to be working, so we're going to give this a shot and see what happens. Oh, putting the balance on here. Sorry, I didn't show the whole thing. There's a special slot you have to slide in, come in from the underside, etc., etc. So it just took a bit of extra concentration, and I just wanted this to go right. So the very good thing is the fact that this movement is now ticking. It was not ticking when I got it, and it's now actually running again. So uh, my conclusion is the reason it had stopped was because uh, debris from here probably worked away into the fine gear train and stopped the movement. So the next thing I'm going to do, make sure it's fully wound, yeah. It's tight, yeah. So we have good resistance here. We're going to put this on the time graph and see what it's doing. So I've uh, set the lift angle at 38 degrees and this machine should be able to pick up the coaxial. So it was uh, sold to me in good faith that it can. Um, if anything, I can adjust the rate and the amplitude if the lift angle is correct. It's very good. I'm could be off if you work with Amiga and you have the correct lift angle please share it in the comment so um, I will know for the future but um, yeah very happy with this that's uh, dial down position crown facing south crown down pretty much straight as an arrow plus six seconds a day very very good very impressive and dial up position Again, very, very good. Do we have any variation? Let's have a look. No, plus five, within, within a second, that's very good. Let's do crown to the right. Nice. Excellent, very good variational position on this movement. Very, very good. Now I'm happy. So, there we go. Secure this in place. Different screws on this little lever. They are a thinner thread than anything else. Why? I don't know, but uh, that's the way they've done it. Come back here, you. Oh, come on. Well, I'm gonna go and have lunch soon. I might help. There we go, that's secured. Um, why don't we fit this lever next? Later, I'm going to fit this spring, I'll come in from the underside, in around there and there, that tensions these two pushers. I probably won't do that on the camera because... Uh... Okay, pretty much good to fit the overlying bridge at this point. Over 
Lane. Okie dokie, time for the column wheel. Grease up the pole, which the column wheel goes on. Make sure we don't squeeze the little lever here. Nice. Now we got the big fat screw that keeps it in place. There we go. Good. And that's in place. Secure that with a screw. Tidy everything up a bit. Tension spring needs to be down here. Good, that seems to be working. Um, let's put the Let's put the um, spring for the minute recorder. Minute recorder will get a little droplet of ninety ten. Um What's next? What's next? What's next? Oh yes, we got the driving pinion. Looks like this. This little fiddly part. That will come down here. Hopefully go into the hole jewel. I'm actually gonna stop the movement for this. And we have this overlying start stop lever here for that. Now that it's, um, well, did a little mistake, so I've uh, backtracked a bit, and that is this wheel here, intermediate hour wheel. It's not, this is the intermediate auto winder wheel. This is our intermediate hour wheel. It comes in underneath here. There we go, now we can put it all back together again. Okay, almost back to where I was. Um, I had put the wrong wheel in here. This is all lined up correctly. There's a little spring that's going to come in here. I'll put that in when the bridge is on. It's easier. And uh, basically what I have now is the starts, well, the reset hammers. They can get a little bit of blue grease on the hammer surface. is here and here. Can put a little bit of grease on the post where it goes on. And the corner there. I've also greased, uh, I've also put this little uh, intermediate lever in here. Um, so now this will come on here somewhere. Okay, I think everything is lined up how it should be. Um, any more parts going in there? No, I think that's it. The last thing to put on here is the bridge itself. We're gonna put a little drop of uh, oil on the inside of the, um, it's a bit hard to 
oil this after and we put a droplet of 9010 for the chronograph runner in there. We've also tensioned this this spring. Okay, proof is in the pudding. Let's have a look. It's uh, running. Stop. Start. Stop. And reset. Lovely. Start. Stop. Reset. So we're back on the dial side. Put the quick set lever back in. Let engage the spring like so. I think I would prefer a quick set uh, on the crown, um, but this is the way it's made, fair enough. Our recorder. That's the minute recorder wheel. It's, it's kind of pressed onto that. Like so. That looks nice and straight. Okie dokie. That's one way of doing it. Um, I guess there's a different date, and this might be more snappy than the 7750. That'll be interesting to see. Intermediate hour wheel. Uh, hour wheel. From there. And we have, let's see, a little bit of grease. A little bit of grease here, here, and here. on this here we can put a little grease here put this on Is that right no other way around like this there we go and we'll pop a little bit of grease there as well. It comes in here. It means we can do a little bit of grease on here. In like so. Actually, put a little bit of grease on the reset hammer surface itself. Like there. And we have this 
little spring. Let's see what side, what way? What way? This way. So come here. And uh, we need to tension that. So we'll put a little bit of grease where it's going to touch, which is here and here. This, of course, is one of those fun pieces. So you've got to tension the spring. Probably a nice technique to it. I just haven't quite um, learned it. Put these all the way together. There we go, not pinged away, that's good. Something like that. Get the photo for the client. Something like that. Okay, that's quite nifty. The quick set date comes from underneath here and moves this. And I guess the redesign here for the for the uh, minute recorder is to reflect the traditional layout of the hands because the Zen Zen 50 has a different layout of hands. Fair enough. And there's the wheel with the pinion that will drive the uh, minute recorder. That makes sense. So you have your minute recorder, second, just a second hand, and your hour recorder down here. And you've got your quick set date underneath here, very nice and nifty. That will just move freely with the date wheel. And that just engages from the other side. I quite like that. That's very nice. And a traditional date wheel here. Driven by a standard intermediate wheel from the hour wheel. Hmm, pretty straightforward, that bit. And we have our date corrector lever. That will ensure that the date disc is in the right position to compare to the 
the window and the door. There we go. And we have a little disc that goes on top of this. That we secure with some screws. And those are the final screws, with the exception of the oscillating weight screw and the case screws or case clamp screws to go on this movement next I'm going to fit the dials dial and hands and then we're going to test it See, nothing scary about fitting um, hands onto this doll when you don't have access to any replacements. No, nothing scary at all. Cool, I can see that moving around, so that's a good sign. And there we have the gasket in. We've cleaned up any specks of dirt and whatnot that might have been in here. Next, it's time to fit the case clamps. This is when I drop them and loose them in the middle of the movement and I have to take everything apart again. Let's see. has happened. That is almost as annoying as when you tighten a case screw and uh, the thread breaks. That's the one. I'm going to tighten them a bit intermittently. Yeah, I remember that's happened as well. Final screw on the movement and it breaks off in the, uh, <laughs> the base plate. That is usually followed by profanity. Okay, going to loosen this one again. There we go. Tight, but not too tight. Don't want them loosen, loosening up and moving into movement. Can happen. All right, good. Now for the very last screw in the movement, and that is related to the oscillating weight. Make sure there's no dust on that. Good. Be amazed how small fibers can make their way into movements. Good old five bear bit five ball bearing rotor. Nice and tight, not too tight, of course. That moves very nice and freely. you want 
this monodirectional winding, so it will only wind in one direction. So, conclusion, what do I think of the movement? The Omega 3330, well, the Val Ju 7750 is very nice, and so is the Omega 3330. Um, the column wheel upgrade is nice, as I call it an upgrade, it's, you'll, you'll say a watch is nice if it has a column wheel. Uh, the cam lever is pretty much just as nice in my opinion, but uh, I think it is nice. I'm not going to lie, that is a nice little, it looks nice in there. Um, the finishing is the only thing I would really uh, give it any negative points on, because there's some nice decoration on the movement and stuff, but it's not, it's pretty coarse, this uh, finish is pretty, it's pretty industrial. And uh, some of the screws, for example, the uh, case screws are matte. Most of the screws on the dial side are matte. And I don't know what one of these costs new, but it's, it's, they're fairly expensive. It's not a cheap watch. And uh, as I said earlier, during the service, you can get a nice vintage watch, uh, with much nicer finishing for a few hundred pounds compared to a few thousand that these cost. So yeah, I would expect them to have a nicer finish throughout. Um, it's a nice movement to service if I could get parts. Uh, I've been more tense than usual working on this. I should just relax and work on it, but off camera, I did lose the, the spring for the date and I, I was um, saying lots of nasty words in the workshop, uh, crawling around on the floor. After about 40 minutes of crying in the corner, it suddenly appeared to me in the dark. So I did find it. I could have made that part. I could have made a click spring, no, a date spring, but it wouldn't be nice. I would like to be able to go to my parts supplier or swatch directly and say, look, I'd like to buy an extra one of these springs. I'd like to buy the new pushers, I'd like to buy a new crystal, I'd like to buy a new cas case pack gasket, I'd like to buy a bezel, I'd like to buy hands, I'd like to buy a new dial. Um, why they won't let me do that is very strange. Uh, Cousins has got a legal case with Swatch, and I really hope Swatch just turns around and says, look guys, fine, we're going to supply parts, here you go. Uh, I don't mind paying money for it, and customers don't neither. That way we can all work on these movements. I know they want to monopolize their service centers, but uh, that's not very nice, is it? Anyway, we're going to get the case back on now and call it a night. And there we have it, folks. We have a working chronograph. We have an oscillating weight that moves around. That's good. Fantastic. All right, until next time, I hope you all have a good one.